Hey guys, so today I am going to be taking a look at Ubuntu Budgie 18.04. Now this is the beta 2 image, but I do have to say that I've not come across any bugs. So this is likely to be a reasonably good refre reflection of what the final product is looking like. Now. Uh, I have got to say, I tried it on the Triton laptop, so it's seen bare metal, and quite frankly, my experience has been fantastic. It's a really good distribution. It gets better with every release, um, and this is a very, it seems like it's going to be a very strong long term support release so far. In fact, and it might be a bit early to say this, but, but I don't think so actually. I don't think it is. Uh, this is a really good alternative if you're looking for something that's polished and looks nice and is user-friendly but are not fond of the GNOME desktop or the direction that the GNOME desktop's going in. Ubuntu are trying to modify it in, in certain ways to make it more uh, usable to its user base. But um, but if you're looking for something that's this, um, that's, this, well, that's not GNOME 3, this is based on GNOME 3, although the next version of Budgie is likely to be based on QT, and I can see why, and that's that's a, a sensible decision from what I can see. I, I, you know, when, when it comes to working with the QT libraries, I can see why they might prefer that. Um, but all in all, still very user-friendly, very intuitive, and even though it's got the uh, the taskbar here at the top and the panel here at the, the left-hand side, uh, they don't do this in Solus. In Solus, they... Uh, use the more traditional sort of a Windows seven-ish kind of uh, kind of layout. It's the same uh, menu here and and all that kind of stuff. But um, but in Solus, it's more of a traditional metaphor. Whereas here, it's uh, it's a little bit different. It's maybe a little bit more like what you might see, you know, off the surface, what you might see in something like Unity or GNOME. But then you know, you pull up the menu. This is a very standard menu. You can even use the Meta key, Windows key, whatever you want to call it. And uh, and that uh, that just pulls up, and then you can start searching. I installed Caden Live through a flat pack, actually. So uh, yeah, let's kick off with 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 Caden Live. Now I usually install Caden Live as a way to see how a GTK environment handles uh, a Qt application, because um, when it comes to Caden Live, it can be a bit awkward when it works in GTK environments. Now there is fortunately enough a very 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 convenient and easy fix for that in for people in their day to day use, and that's to use the Caden Live app image, which is available off cadenlive.org. It gives everything bundled up it gives you everything that you need bundled up in a nice little app image uh, and you can take it everywhere you don't even need to have system D to, to have it running like you do with something like snaps but yeah the, the Caden live app image is really really quite good but I thought I might give the Flatpak uh, an install so I I cracked on with Flatpak I installed Flatpak and I installed the uh, Flathub repository and then Caden live it was all re very reasonably easy uh, just a few command I did need to put in some command line terminals to get Flatpak you know, I, I needed to install flat pack, and I just used the command line for that. I didn't. I don't know if there's a GUI way of doing it because you know it's just like after a while when you want to install something quickly and easily, you just intuitively drop into the command line, um, or at least I do. So anyway, this is the flat pack of Caden Live, and it looks nice actually. This is the Dark Breeze theme. Uh, Obviously, it doesn't fit in exactly with what I think is the arc theme, but it's dark. It looks it looks nice enough. But also, when it comes to Caden Live, if it works, it doesn't need to look pretty, but it does. So you know, double bonus. It themes nicely. It doesn't necessarily need to theme consistently. It just just theming nicely is is good enough for me. So um, let's have a look at the GNOME Center. Uh, the yeah, this is the GNOME Software Center. Uh, it rings similar to the GNOME Software Center we've seen in previous versions of Ubuntu distributions, but it's very good. What I quite liked about it is a um, nice little font browser. I don't know if this is new or has been around for a while, but uh, just, to, just to be able to preview a few fonts there. Um, I, would have, I, th I would have thought there might be a few more, but then I guess you might need to just pop into apt for uh, for that, but that's... Um, yeah, it's just nice to 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 um, to add on a few extensions here. So anyway, but yes, the uh, the GNOME Center, yes, nice, easy. Uh, I can't imagine anyone having a problem with that. Not even like a first time user or anything like that. Let's look at some of the applets in the top right hand corner here. So this is Caffeine, I think. Um, Anyway, caffeine basically means it allows you to uh, turn off your screensaver. Uh, so if you're doing like a presentation or something, then 
um, you can you know just pop it up and, and not have to worry about your your screen saver coming into um, effect halfway through. This is uh, Nightlight. Uh, Nightlight is fantastic. It's like Redshift. Basically, it uh, adds a red hue to your desktop during the night hours. Uh, so you don't have that blue light keeping you um, sort of artificially awake. Sometimes, you know, your your eye and your brain can interpret the blue light coming off the screen as natural light, as daylight, and therefore it keeps your, uh, you know, your sort of your your body in a state of awakeness uh, that it wouldn't otherwise be in. So if you have this this red hue on the desktop, and you can do it with Redshift, you can do it with uh, night light in in GNOME. Um, it it just um, yeah, it just makes the the light a bit more. Um, suitable for the uh, uh, for the eyes I guess so uh, this is a quick note a uh, quick note is it's a post-it note system I've got to be honest I have never used such a widget but um, if, if it were to come with the the budgie desktop it'd be interesting to see whether or not I would um, you could you've got all your your mounting here we go um, double points for guessing what the name of my computer is if my username is that. You can also use previous uh, reviews as clues if you want. Uh, okay, so we've got the notification panel here as well. Uh, I've been on Mate for quite some time, so I'm very used to the traditional desktop uh, layouts and, and, and the way things work. And this is, is something that's new that's really quite piqued my interest. and. It's this idea of the notifications that pop up and then they get listed in, very similar to how it works on Android. And I quite like that because uh, from time to time there are notifications that pop up that are useful that, that happen when I'm AFK. If, I, if, if, for example, I want to see if a process is finished, completed, uh, when I get back to my computer after making a cup of tea, then it's great to be able to check the backlog of notifications to see, you know, things like that. It's... Um, it's good. Also, runs lovely in a virtual machine, but I don't know if that's as a result of the uh, the newer uh, upgrades or uh, newer versions of software. So, or, so, so yeah. Um, I really haven't covered everything, have I? It comes with Chromium as standard, which is um, ah, but it does. But um, it comes with Chromium installed as standard even, I believe, on the minimal install, but it's really not difficult. Well, I mean, Firefox is right there on the front page of the store, so. Oh, I haven't even checked out the uh, the file manager. Um, is this, ah, uh, it's just files. It's the same you get unknown, but it's it's a fine browser. Icon seem to be uh, a reasonable size there. The icon theme is nice. I really do quite like the icon theme. Lots of budgie applets. I gotta be honest, this isn't the most exciting thing for me because, um, I tend to like my desktop environment with, uh, you know, a bit bit more on the minimalist side. Oh, global menu applets. That is interesting. I didn't see that one there. But yeah, you, yeah. I mean, one of the things I did notice is that there is a distinct um, increase of of plugins. It seems, but uh, so that should be pretty good. It's interesting. Actually, what they did here is um, there's uh, you, there is the option to install snaps and flat packs. Uh, software center and a bu uh, um, budgie budgie applets right there as well. So, uh, and then you get to, if you select this. Okay, so there are several appearances. So it gives you various different designs here. Yes, yeah, I um, I remember this, and I I had a look through them, and it's like I say, this is a really nice looking distribution. Maybe go, I might go so far as to say the best looking of the Ubuntu um, siblings, but. Um, when I installed it on bare metal, I actually kept this theme as well uh, because it's the nicest looking theme. Also, and it's a very uh, small note, but I actually quite like it, is I really like the start button. I don't know why. It just, to me, it's, um, it, you know, it's, it's kind of, it looks nice. It's it's low key, but, it's, you know, you sort of still know what it is. So I really don't have too much else to say on this distribution. There is the, um, the panel settings you can get on the... Uh, on the side here, and oh yes, I, I remember this from last time. The input-output settings here, really useful, especially if you're doing streams and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's applets, notifications, settings. The settings are easy to use. 
it's all good and then uh, yeah you can uh, oh I've added a bottom panel um, on accident is that it remove the panel there we go remove panel hooray there we go and auto start so that's quite good in fact with um, gnome you have to use the gnome tweak tool to, to do auto start so so this is definitely more uh, customizable than gnome uh, it's almost like what you might expect a natural GNOME 3 successor would be from, from GNOME 2, rather than uh, a complete uh, UI overhaul. Um, fantastic distribution. I you know, can't say a word against it, really. It's fantastic. Um, I think it's a good alternative to the vanilla Ubuntu if GNOME isn't your style. It looks nice. It works nice. No performance issues. Uh, no UI issues, no crashing issues. It's good. So, uh, I think I'm going to leave it there. Uh, definitely worth checking out if you are so inclined. Um, but that's about it from me today. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now. Hey guys, this is just the end screen, so I'm going to promote some things. Uh, feel free to follow me on Mastodon uh, if you want to talk Linux with me. I'm on linuxrocks.online, in my opinion, the best Mastodon server. Also, I'm developing a NeoCities website which lists uh, my favorite applications and websites. So I'll put a link to that in the description as well, and I'm going to be updating that uh, on an ongoing basis. So if you want to see various apps and websites that I recommend, uh, yeah, link in the description. And for those of you that would like to see me in a slightly less technical capacity, I've got another channel where I play games with a few friends of mine called Project Chronicle. I will, of course, link that in the description below. Toodaloo.